I've heard that. Unlike any lamb I've ever had, like that. Looks like these customers had one hell of a memorable night. But this isn't the first time the customers had a foodgasm so intense, you could almost feel it through the screen. Yep, just like in season 4, when a customer couldn't stop singing praises. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The competition was getting tougher by the day, and we were now down to just 4 chefs. Each of the chefs were getting ready for their next dinner service, and only had one chance to prove themselves. This service was packed with tons of drama. While the contestants were off to an amazing start, would they be able to handle the pressure? As the dinner service began, Chef Ramsay called out the first ticket. Jen, Gavin, and Corey Erling communicated very well and got the first order of appetizers ready. Both orders came out at lightning speed. But did they end up compromising the flavors of their dish by trying to finish it on time? When Chef Ramsay first tasted Corey's scallops, this is what he had to say. Nicely cooked the scallops. Thank you. Phew, that's relieving. Next, Ramsay waited on Jen's risotto, and when she sent it up to the pass, Chef Ramsay looked serious. Was Jen in some deep trouble? Just as Chef Ramsay tasted the dish, he called her out, and this is what followed. Stunning. Stunning risotto, yes? Sure, the famous chef was impressed, but what about the customers? When the dish was served, this is how the customers reacted. That was a bang-on job. Now, that's the kind of start to a service Ramsay was looking for. And 25 minutes later, the appetizers continued to fly out at a good pace. However, Jen, somewhere along the way, lost her footing. After a string of perfect orders, Jen brought up a risotto that was a bit too mushy. And Chef Ramsay couldn't believe the fact that she screwed up the momentum. So this is what he had to say. Have you switched off now? Not at all, Chef. Not at all. The rice is mush. Ramsay then asked her to get her act together as he started working on fixing her dish. Thankfully, Jen's second attempt at the risotto was perfect. And while she expected Chef Ramsay to praise her, this is what happened instead. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. Yes, Chef. You just confirm how lazy you are. In the end, Ramsay was mad at her for her inconsistent performance, and this is what he had to say. What do you only do when it suits you? You blow hot and cold. Stunning plan. Stunning plan. The team moved on to the entrees, and Luis Petroza and Corey brought their dishes to the pass. Corey had managed to nail the salmon once again, and Chef Ramsay was impressed. Next, the famous chef waited for the salmon garnish. And when Christina McEmer brought the carrot puree to the pass, she forgot to mention an important detail while handing over the pan. So, this is what happened. Ah, Don't stop and look stupid like some thick cow. This wasn't gonna end well, and just as I expected, Chef Ramsay was fuming and lashed out at Christina by saying this. If a handle is over the f***ing flame, say something will you please, yes? yes chef. Christina acknowledged her mistake and promised to never do it again. I mean, she was single-handedly responsible for burning Chef Ramsay's hand, and that's crazy. But guess what? Something even crazier happened when she got her second garnish to the pass. Not again. I mean, how could she forget to inform him again? Was she even all there? I mean, you guys have to see how hot this pan really was. Check this out. No, no. You're not even, you're not, you're not even f telling me. That pan was literally sizzling hot. Which makes me wonder, was Christina doing this on purpose? Either way, the show had to go on, and Chef Ramsay ordered her to wake up and moved on to the next set of orders. As the team continued with their appetizers, Jen and Corey had to be at the top of their game to finish the appetizers on a good note. But Jen was starting to feel a little sluggish. She declared that she was concentrating on the risotto and ignored frying the quail eggs even though she was asked to do so. Now, let me remind you, Jen has never been so much of a team player. And by doing things at her own pace, Jen was just being herself. When she finally got the eggs done, they were rejected for being burnt. They were so burnt that a minor fire had erupted at the garnish station. Chef Ramsay was growing impatient. He was endlessly waiting for the orders and was desperate to have them out as soon as possible. Ramsay thought that Jen was delaying things on purpose, so he had to remind her of this. Teamwork, yes? Talk to them. It's not about you now. It was already an hour into the service, and not only Chef Ramsay, but even the customers were growing impatient. Would the food do the trick, or would the customers have to leave unhappy? When the appetizers were finally served, this is how the customers reacted. Mm. It looks like the customers approved of the appetizers, but now they were waiting for their entrees. Would this just be another endless wait? Or would the contestants rush to complete their orders? As the team moved on to the entrees, Corey was lagging behind with her dish. But since Chef Ramsay was in a hurry, she took a risk and sent it up to the pass. 
Ramsay was in such a haste that he served it immediately, but guess what happened? The dish came right back for being undercooked, and the famous chef was pissed. Everything's perfect so far. That's f raw. Ramsay couldn't believe that Corey was beginning to fail him, just like Jen did a few minutes ago. He asked her to get her act together because they did have a good start after all. Eventually, Corey's refire was accepted, and Petroza's perfectly cooked beef brought the team back on track. So, the dish was perfect, but Petroza's station was anything but that. My god. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe how anyone could be this messy, and this is what he had to say. You can't slice something stunning on top of something sh Petroza got to work immediately, and not only claimed his station, but sent out another remarkable dish to the pass. His filet mignons were so good that Chef Ramsay didn't care if he was working on a messy station anymore. An hour and a half into the service, almost all the diners had received their entrees. Ramsay motivated the final four, and they completed the service on a sweet note. But what about the customers? Well, it looks like they had a delightful night as well. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Post-dinner service, Chef Ramsay's expression was pretty grim, and the contestants were beginning to get a little worried. I don't know what to say anymore. Ramsay then raised his hand, but what he did next left all the contestants stunned. <laughs> Tonight was extraordinary. Yup, Chef Ramsay was so happy that the service ended on a great note and left several customers satisfied. However, this next service was full of mistakes. From being undercooked to incomplete, each order had some issues. But Chef Ramsay, as always, knew exactly what to do. Get out! It was the first dinner service of season 14, and 18 new contestants were geared up to face their worst nightmare yet. Knowing how most of the first dinner services aren't really successful, would this one be an exception? That night, actor Dean McDermott, German film producer Michael O'Hoven, Puerto Rican actress Joyce Garreau, and American football player Delaney Walker dined in at Hell's Kitchen. As a special, a pan-seared prawn appetizer was served tableside by Josh Chavado from the blue team and T. Gregoire from the red team. As the red team got their first order, Michelle Tribble propelled her team to a strong start after getting her scallops accepted. In the blue team, Cameron Spagnolo got started with his team's first appetizer order. But when he delivered his risotto to the pass, it was rejected for not having enough butter and salt. Nick Bond quickly helped and got the risotto accepted, but the team had to wait because Michael Dussault dropped the scallops really late. And well, this left Chef Ramsay in dismay. And how? The risotto's dying! In the red kitchen, Krisha Smirler was completely lost, and the team unfortunately had no time to babysit her. Sous chef Andy took notice and asked Megan Gill to help her, and thankfully the team was back on track. Their next table was McDermott's table. So Monique Booker and Christine Hazel started working on their meat dishes in order to cook them to perfection. 40 minutes into the service, Michael finally got done with the first order of scallops, but was it up to standards? After noticing that the scallops were colored on one side and boiled on the other, this is how Chef Ramsay reacted. The sad thing is he two portions as well. You are not at the fucking senior home. Ramsay warned him that he had one last chance before he got kicked out of the competition. So Michael got to work on his refire immediately after and sent it out to the pass. Would the appetizer manage to please the customers? Now, this was the first batch of appetizers that was leaving the blue kitchen, and this is how the blue diners reacted. That was delicious. Yeah, I did it. It's always rewarding when the customers enjoy the food, but don't forget, this was just the beginning. Would the team continue to maintain its stride? Back in the red kitchen, the team started working on their entrees, and Christine sent out her first order of pork. Chef Ramsay noticed that Christine sliced the pork before the lamb was even ready, and because of that, the pork went dry. At this point, there was no room for any gaps in communication. Now, the red team had to suffer the consequences, and this is what Chef Ramsay asked them to do. Refire! One pork, one lamb! Urgently! An hour and a half into the service, the red team was still working on McDermott's entree. As Christine sliced the lamb once again, the lamb was way too raw. To make matters even worse, Megan found out that the oven wasn't hot enough. As she told Christine to use the convection oven, Megan discovered that Monique's oven was off the entire time. Were these contestants really ready for Hell's Kitchen? How could they make such a dumb mistake? You don't even have to be a chef to know this stuff, man. Finally, after a lot of back and forth, Christine and Monique sent out their orders, but would it be their saving grace? Sadly, this is how it turned out to be. Raw lamb, dry pork! Look at it! Ridiculous! Later, Christine returned to get a refire, and guess how many contestants were working on fixing the lamb? You have to see this to believe it. These two right here. Despite all that, the pork turned out to be raw. There was no way Chef Ramsay would send out raw pork to be served, but there was something he really wanted out of the kitchen. The entire team. Get out! 
Get out! Piss off! Meanwhile, the blue team was at the top of their game, and the customers were delighted with their entrees. Amazing. Perfect. That's perfect. But in this next service, two very famous personalities dined in, but the teams were struggling to dish out their orders. However, with one swift command from Chef Ramsay, things turned around for the better. It was the brunch service of season 15, and this service was going to be really special. It was meant for the local chefs to get a break from their work life and spend time with their families over a delicious meal. Cause, well, everyone knows it's not easy being a chef. That day, two VIPs dined in, being Florida, who was served by the red team, and Jeff Dunham, along with his puppet Walter, who was served by the blue team. As the service began, Florida graced Hell's Kitchen with his presence, and the red team was stoked to have him as their customer. However, just as the red team received their first order, they started having some problems. Like how Jackie Fuchs barely communicated with Arielle Malone on the chicken and waffles. When Jackie asked for a time, this is how she replied. Jackie, how long on chicken? Got you. Got you. Really? Got you? That means nothing. When asked for a ticket time, you better give the time or you'll frustrate absolutely everyone. But who was going to explain that to Jackie? She believed that she had everything under control, but when she got her chicken out of the oven, it was burnt. It looks like that's a sign for Jackie to cut the crap, huh? Meanwhile, look who just walked in. Got a table in the kitchen. You yeah. know, I think we lost up there. Jeff Dunham and Walter had just filled Hell's Kitchen with a renewed spirit, but mind you, this old man was going to be hard to please. Would the blue team be able to live up to the challenge? The team was pretty shaky right from the start, since Jared Botkin brought the blue team's first order of chicken, which turned out to be really raw. Since this order was headed straight to Dunham's table, Chef Ramsay was infuriated. He called the entire team to the pantry and did this. I swear to God, I, I, I'd rather you just all f off out of it. And while the entire team was getting schooled in the back, the drama didn't escape Walter's ears. I heard the F-bomb. Chef said the F-bomb. Meanwhile, Jackie worked on her timing, and the order finally reached Florida's table. But did the rapper enjoy his meal, or would it go down as his worst experience yet? Wow. Heaven's Kitchen. So, it looks like it was worth the wait. In the meantime, Chad Gelso sent up Nikosha's salad, but Ariel forgot about the quail eggs that went in it. When Chad brought his eggs to the pass, Chef Ramsay chewed him out. She dresses the salad, put the quail egg in the salad. Stop f***ing around. 30 minutes into the brunch service, the blue team was working on their refire. However, when Jared sent out his refired chicken, it came out raw yet again. Fed up with Jared, Ramsey did this. I can't accept this any longer. Jared, get out! Finally, the blue team got Dunham's table accepted, and they rushed to serve the table before the old man got wild. Thankfully, the blue team escaped Walter's anger since it looked like Jeff was having quite the foodgasm. And well, that's how you relish a good dish. That was amazing. An hour and a half into the brunch service, the blue team moved on to their next ticket. With Jared gone, Danny Harrison felt a little pressured, but continued to work on the ticket. She really wanted to get the food out on time. At the same time, Frank Calla asked Manda Palomino to watch his French toast, and Manda got to it immediately. When Ramsey reminded her about the steaks, Manda rushed to her station to check them out. But where does that leave the French toast? That burns. Yep. Chef Ramsey was extremely furious. Manda admitted that she was assigned with watching the toast, and Frank threw her under the bus by saying that she took over his station. But Ramsey was over and done with the confusion and did this. You are standing right in front of it. Yes, Chef. Do me a favor. Get out! In the dining room, the guests started to grow impatient with the wait. And seeing this, Chef Ramsey decided to send the red team to the blue kitchen to help Danny and Frank. With the extra hands, the blue team was finally able to send out all their orders to their guests. And as they say, all's well that ends well. Flavors, phenomenal. It's really good. Thank you, Ryan. How excellent was the food? Amazing. But in this next service, the contestants actually got kicked out of the kitchen. Get out. I'm stuck. Despite that, the customers were in for a treat. How in the world did that happen? It was a new dinner service for the All-Stars, and both teams were ready to beat each other and see someone leave. During that night, Tyler Hilton, Sebastian Roche, and Kesha Sharp dined in at Hell's Kitchen. When both teams received their first order in the Red Kitchen, Elise Harris and Jennifer Norman were at their best communication. From the previous season, we know that Elise is a poor team player, but this time, she was here to win it. Both contestants pushed their appetizers out, and this helped the Red Team get off to a strong start. The blue team wasn't far behind, with Millie Medley and Nick Peters Bond rocking their stations like never before. But has there ever been one service that ended just as well as it started? Things had to go down, and that's what happened when Chef Ramsay called out the first ticket for the entrees. 
Out of nowhere, Robin Almodovar accidentally talked over Ramsey, and this pissed him off. I took my lamb out. I put my lamb back in. Yes, chef. I don't give a f what you took out. The famous chef was already irritated, and Robin only made things worse when she sent up a Wellington that was cold. The atmosphere in the kitchen was definitely getting heated, but what's crazy is that the diners had just the opposite reaction. In the blue kitchen, Chef Ramsay asked Robin to repeat the orders he called out, but she failed to give him an answer. Although, while she did recite the order after a while, Robin sent up two Wellingtons when only one was ordered. And this made Chef Ramsay angry. The lamb's ready, I told you that, but the beast blue! Yes, yeah, Chef, the Wake up! Two hours into the service, both teams were on their final tickets, and the team to finish first would be the winning team. The red kitchen was on their final ticket when Dana sent up a Wellington that was overcooked. Dana had a backup plan, which is good, but that came out raw. Chef Ramsay was dismayed and sent the red team to the pantry for a brutal showdown. I want you to go upstairs and think how your team can be stronger without two of you in it. After a disastrous night, Chef Ramsay and sous chef Christina were the ones to wrap up the service. And needless to say, the food was mouth-watering. This is so delicious. So, these were the times when customers absolutely loved the food on Hell's Kitchen. I'm waiting for the moment I can dine there someday. Do I have to audition to be a customer or something? Please help me out with this, guys.